Well, why don't we talk about it a little further and let's talk about it seriously. So Kenny Omega, based on this, is in Japan visiting Sega at a minimum. He's an executive vice president. He's suspended. The Young Bucks are executive vice presidents. They're suspended. CM Punk's the biggest star in the company. As of this moment, he's at least suspended. And I believe the same with Ace Steel and various other participants. There's an investigation going on. We don't know what that investigation truly is. If we're going with the idea there's only one investigation, we don't know what that investigation truly is. Is it just about what happened in the room that night? And can it be just about that? Or is it about everything that led up to that, which includes the behavior of the executive vice presidents, in which case Kenny Omega may be staying in Japan? I don't know. But what do you think about this investigation, what we know so far, what we don't know. And again, what could it be? It has to be more than just a fight, right? It has to go back to previous things into what led them to walking down the hall and everything else. Well, if, if this was Vince McMahon, he'd say, well, you can't make a decision in a vacuum, pal. You need all the information. You need to know what led everybody to that point. What caused them to have a certain frame of mind? What caused friction to be bubbling over? Uh, and steps along the way of where it either could have been alleviated or it was magnified. And who's done what to who uh, from the feuding camps. And as well, you said, is there only one investigation? Well, there's going to be more than one investigation because at some point the investigation is going to find something about somebody that they don't like and don't agree with, and then they're going to want to conduct their own investigation of the investigation. But at minimum, yes, you have to go back and say, okay, why is yes, CM Punk said these things at the media scrum. Why did he say these things out in public at the media scrum? What led to that? What Issues has he been having that he felt this was the way to settle things? And then for the uh, the uh, invited guests to the locker room, why did anywhere from three to six of them, as best we can determine, barge into the locker room? Uh, instead of waiting for the owner of the company, since they were his sub subordinates, Instead of waiting for him to tell them, yeah, I think we might ought to, you know, just pack it up and go home for tonight while emotions are running high. Let's everybody sit down tomorrow. Or would he have said, well, yeah, I think you ought to bust in the locker room and see who gets whose ass kicked or whatever. But they didn't do that. They didn't wait. Why didn't they wait? What's their issue? Let's get it all out in the open. So, yes, the investigation has to go back to what's been going on at, that we know of for at least the last several months between the buckaroos and CM Punk and anyone uh, associated with him or sympathetic to his side of the story. Because there's and this, that's the side that hadn't been saying anything. The first we heard from the Punk side was when Punk did the media scrum, right? Has there been any shoot interviews from anybody associated with Punk? Has there been any veiled references? Besides when Punk responds to things like he did to Adam Page's interview when he did it a few weeks ago, or when he references something that somebody else has done, and that's only been recent because nobody else was bothering to put out his side of the story. Well... There's a difference, too, between bothering to put out his side of the story and getting his side of the story. You also do have to, you know, it's tit for tat. Well, no, you, well, and, and you got the tits on one side, uh, whispering everything and, and to all of their friendly journalists and making sure that they have the story that they want out there. And you got the tat side that's been acting professionally and going about their business until they're forced by the lack of leadership in the company and the general overall tone to do something about it themselves because nobody else is going to do it. So you got the tit side and you got the tat side. So this investigation, 
If it's going, you know, have you ever noticed there's a lot more tits than there are tats in the world today? And not anymore. Everyone has a tat nowadays. It seems like it used to be you had to be a tough guy or a sailor or something to have a tattoo, and then it became the punk rockers embraced it, and then a lot of skinny white wimps saw Henry Rollins like I wish I was like that, and then they got tattoos, and then Axl Rose influenced a whole nother crew of people, and then they got yeah, tattoos. But there's still more tits in the world because you know what another word for tit is, don't you? What's Boob. That? And there's a lot more boobs in the world than there are tats. All right, and there's certainly tit willows. And before we get stuck in the willows here, why don't we get back to the question I was asking you, which is about this investigation. If the investigation is about what happened in that room, like we said before, it can't be limited to just what happened there. It has to be what caused it. I have a very difficult time. There's a few people I think have to be fired. Uh, And it may not be the people everyone else thinks, but again, if it's all about the general behavior leading into this, I I think Ace Steel's done, just because I don't know how you bring him back after this. I think Kenny Omega may have an issue. I think I think you should make Ace Steel the chairman. <laughs> He's gonna you can't steal. Is Sean Spears still there? Does Sean Spears still work there? Oh boy, there's a name from the past. See that gimmick's free, available, and open. Who was his manager? Tully Blanchard. Tully Blanchard. Is Tully still there? No, he's he in left. Ring of Honor with Cole Cabana and Brian Cage and all the guys no one sees ever. Oh, no, he quit. He didn't he even quit. show. Remember, he no-showed their yes. pay-per-view. <laughs> he no-showed when he was supposed to go to, yeah. So, uh, yeah, but I, I'm most sympathetic to Ace Steel of anybody because he's just running in the room to save his crippled wife. I guess the question becomes from a company standpoint. Is Ace Steel's responsibility to go in there and de-escalate things or go in there and fight on behalf of a side i'm not saying it's right or wrong but if you're investigating someone i'm going to guess that's going to be the question they're asking about a steel's involvement i would think yes but i would also think that you know if so if your friend his dog and your crippled wife are in a room and six at least or thereabouts, full-grown adults burst into the room and there's a fight going on, you're going to go in and help the uh, outnumbered side. But that's just me. What do you think is going to happen? What do you think the end result's going to be? You know, here's the thing. If it was the wrestling business of days gone by, then Tony would probably fire a few miscellaneous people yank a knot in a few other people's tails and everybody would go on because it's business and they'll get over it. But now with independent investigations and the cuntish nature of most of the buckaroos and their feelings, you know, who knows it? Because here's the thing. Punk's been putting up with this shit for a while. If he's the biggest star in the company, he's on the, Video game, he's on all the po he's on everything. If they fire him, not only are they shooting themselves in the foot, but also he'll probably sue because he's the goddamn injured and put upon party here that not only injured himself in the line of duty, but then had various high ranking employees burst into his fucking locker room while he's outnumbered and injured. That's a lawsuit, if nothing else. You can fire the Bucks and and Kenny, and it wouldn't really impact business because people are already tuning them out on television anyway. And we've done nine months without Kenny, and it was actually better. I'd love to try to do nine months without the Bucks and see how the but it it's not like the core AEW audience is going to desert if they were not around because they'll watch anything. It's the extra several hundred thousand people that the stars get that you got to worry about going away. They're already going away just when these people pop up on television. But if Kenny was to fire, if if Tony was to fire the buckaroos there, then they'll probably sue him. Who knows what for, but they're litigious twats. Uh, They're whiny little bitches, so that'd probably be their last resort. And I they may be know. suing Punk. I mean, that's the other thing. You're talking about them suing Tony or them suing AEW. They're going to sue Punk, maybe. 
Well, then, if they sue Punk, because Punk, I get Punk gave one a black eye and Ace Steel knocked the other one out with the chair, or vice versa. There's so many stories going around. They both got their fucking r- ruby red asses kicked in fine fashion. I heard Nick Jackson's eye was closed shut immediately almost. Well, so anyway, so they might sue, but if they sue Punk, they're also, and I've I've been a party to a few lawsuits, not from the good side, from the bad side. If they sue Punk, they almost have to sue Tony Khan because Tony Khan not only set up the the working relationship and the working environment and the infrastructure of the whole thing, but it's technically, and they might actually, depending on what kind of lawyer they get, they might name the arena and or whatever arena security were being used that night as well. Because if the Bucks get a lawyer, that lawyer's not going to worry about hurting anybody in the wrestling business's feelings. If they're going to go to the point of a lawsuit, then they'd go all the way. So they might sue Punk as well as Tony Khan because it happened on his watch and they might have to include the arena. And Ace Steel. Well, and Ace Steel, obviously. But I'm talking about even farther reaching the arena. If the arena are the ones that contracted the security. If Tony contracted the security, then he'd get sued twice. But but all these... Pay- I mean, we punched a fucking guy in Baton Rouge one night while I whacked him with the racket and Dundee punched him three times and he sued me, the members of the Midnight Express, Dundee, who he didn't know, so that was a John Doe. He didn't know who the fuck Dundee was. The Baton Rouge Centroplex, the security, and the city of Baton Rouge just for getting punched four times. So you spread a wide net on these lawsuits. So if they wanted to file a suit, they would. their lawyer would tell them most probably to include at least Tony Khan. Then if they were still working there, they'd be suing the guy that they work for. So, it, 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 uh, you know, I mean, from, from a business-only standpoint, you keep punk and you get rid of everybody else. If you want to just get rid of everybody, then you're shooting yourself in the foot for business because then you've lost significant, you know, uh, talent at the top. I don't know what he's going to fucking do. The punk stuff is interesting because, again, punk's not completely innocent. No matter what we want to say, even if you want to take someone's side, we don't know what happened in that room. So punk has to be admonished, punished, whatever it is at a minimum, just like everyone else here. But the issue becomes if Tony just suspends him, and he's going to be out now with an injury, so I don't know even what a suspension means. It's not like, you know, baseball where it's from the beginning of the season or whatever. I don't know how a suspension works if he's going to be out no matter what. It's a paid vacation, like you said. (laughs) But there will be issues bringing Punk back right now into that locker room. I mean, not just with the Bucks' friends. That is a legitimate thing. The way this all went down, the danger it put the whole company in, there are a lot of people upset about it. Does Punk just, if this happens and Tony just brings him back, whatever, a year from now, is it just he brings him right back or Punk just continues to do what he's doing and stays to himself and doesn't really interact with too many people on the roster, except for the people he talks to and gives advice to or whatever? Well, apparently he had been interacting with almost everybody on the roster that's not in the Cucamonga Kids' fucking treehouse club. We've seen the articles from a variety of people praising him for the help that he gave them or the fact that he was giving them advice and his door is always open. Now, again, they may not appreciate or they could have done without this happening because now they're shitting themselves. Oh my God, the company I'm working for may be falling apart. But otherwise than that, Punk has not done anything to dissuade those people's positive opinion of him in the locker room, just as he hasn't done anything to help the negative opinion of him that the Bucks camp has, which is what started the the rumor campaign and the blah blah blah, and well now the whole thing with fish is coming out. 
And now that makes a little more sense when they had that awkward match on TV a few months back that didn't, several months back, that didn't uh, seem like it came together like it should. And it also, there was some miscommunication, we thought, because fuck, he kicked out right at the finish. Almost kicked out on the finish. Come to find out he did kick out on the finish. Because now we find out that Bobby Fish is a godfriend of the Bucks. They're God-fearing family men. And also Bobby Fish is apparently a right-wing religious fanatic because he just uh, admitted in public that he gave money to that lunatic referee Drake Wirtz in Florida to stop the child molesters that are apparently on every corner, according to these people. So he fits in with the ideology that the Bucks and their camp possess. So was that... Uh, and and then P Fish goes into, well, my MMA is so much better than Punk's because he got his ass kicked. Noted UFC veteran Bobby Fish says this. I said this the other day. I hate to hear this because I always thought I'd never cross-examined him about every facet of his life, but I thought Fish was a good talent. He was a, an adult and serious. I didn't know he was a wacko, but now apparently he thinks he's Bobby fucking Gracie and that he could have stretched CM Punk, and he did CM Punk a favor by putting him over that well in the fucking match and challenge him to a fight, and I'd stretch him from asshole to appetite if it was a shoot and all this other stuff, which then backfired on Bobby Fish because all he got on Twitter in response to that was jokes about his fucking advanced age, including, hey, what could you have done? You couldn't even have saved Abraham Lincoln from John Wilkes Booth. But this goes to my question earlier about the investigation and how far it looks back. I gotta look to see when that Bobby Fish match was. It may have been at the end of last year, after Bobby Fish first came in. If Bobby Fish worked with Punk, and now he's admitting he was purposely difficult, and we could see it, and it was noticeable at the time, although because Punk was kind of going through a phase where he would struggle in his matches, you didn't know what... You, you didn't we, realize... we, th we thought he was working the I'm rusty because I just came back deal and not the this prick won't work with me deal. Yeah, not this guy's not giving me anything and I'm trying to be a professional and then he kicks out on the three of the pin. If that happened then, how does that not tie into all this? Bobby Fish's best friends, not best friends, I won't say that, but he's all in the Bucks camp. I mean, he's defending them. I mean, how is that not part of this whole thing? If the whole thing is that the Bucks and their friends have been waiting to get punk. Have had a chapped ass that CM Punk was around since the beginning because it took attention off of them and they was potentially they were seeing that somebody was going to elevate people outside of their little fucking social circle and their little clique. So again, the investigation I would think would have to take that in. So then it covers a whole lot of other stuff. I would think they would have to interview how people how like much, Adam Page. You know, a notably cranky motherfucker who does not take, I believe, as Dave Shearer put it, does not take disrespect well. He comes into a company as the top guy and he gets his finish kicked out on on TV by fucking Bobby Fish, of all people, who was the fourth member of the Undisputed Era. Um, He gets confronted by and and go a guy going into business for himself on a live promo before the main event world title match adam page he sits at home for a couple months injured after surgery listening to all the alleged wrestling journalists whining that he's the one that got poor cole cabana transferred over to ring of honor like Again, like a paycheck every week for working in a non-existent wrestling promotion is a goddamn horrible thing to have happen. He's been, he's been getting a check to work in a fucking existent wrestling promotion for the past three years and done nothing. The whole argument... So, so I'm, I'm just saying that's he's had to sit on top of all this shit and fester about it because all this shit's been going on and nobody's been doing anything about it. If we are to believe that version of events, that Punk is the reason Colt Cabana was not going to be there any longer, why would it have been done that way? Why would it have just been, oh, his contract's expiring, so Tony's not going to renew, renew him? Why wouldn't it have been, hey, listen, if you want me to come in for this first dance, I don't want this guy that cost me a bunch of money, a bunch of fucking time I had to spend dealing with this shit, I don't want him working there. 
that's the time you would have made the move right yeah. there. Send him fucking home. Pay him if you want, but I don't want to see him around here. I said that, but again, the contract was coming up for renewal. Tony was probably thinking, well, maybe Colts lost my number. And then one of the Jackson boys says, oh, well, here's a way we can give Colts some free money from this sucker that we work for. And at the same time, we can start some kind of campaign against CM Punk that it's all his fault. So Cabana goes home to get a check in the mailbox every week to do absolutely fucking nothing. And somehow he's a victim. See, that's the way Tony actually played it smart. I mean, in the long run, it all backfired. But he saw what happened to you when you fired Cabana from Ring of Honor. And all of a sudden you became public enemy number one. Yeah. <laughs> he shifted all of that to Punk. He got away from it. God, you would think that I'd taken ice cream away from orphans. <laughs> we said no no we don't no we don't need you don't have a spot nothing open at this time see you later well we will keep everyone informed about what happens with this investigation like we said there's a lot of interesting things happening here depending on how big the purview is my prediction a steel and kenny omega fired but let's see what happens Jim now wait uh, let's let's Chisel that into some stone here because you've been right with a lot of your predictions the last couple of years. So, And I have said Kenny Omega will be the next EVP out the door, but that, of course, was before Nick Jackson got knocked out. <laughs> and I, I don't even know which one got hit. There's a chair. That's the other thing. Is it a folding chair? Or is it like one of these chairs? Like what kind of chair was thrown exactly? I think it had to be a folding chair because those, those uh, big squeaky chairs like you got, they're too padded. They wouldn't have even heard a little delicate flower like uh, balding Nick Jackson. Was it a chair with four legs? Did A Steel come in there and pick up one of those big chairs with four legs and just <laughs> haul it across the fucking room? How did I want to know how they used the chair? This is the most interesting part of the story that no one's talking about. 